Hey guys, so, so far all the work problems we've done involved constant forces and we calculated the work done by forces that were not changing over time. Now in this video I want to talk about how to calculate the work done by forces that are changing over time by variable forces. Let's check it out. So the work equation right here and right here, the work done by a force equals force times displacement times the cosine of theta where theta is the angle between f and delta x. Uh, remember all that, is applicable only if you have constant forces. So everything we've had so far were constant forces. Now, if we have variable forces, it's a little bit different, but it's pretty much the same thing. Um, if we have variable forces, forces that are changing over time, all we have to do is use the average force instead. Okay, and the simple problems will basically give us forces that are very easy to find the average of. So this equation here, changes by a little bit so the work done by a force that is a variable force is the average force times delta x cosine of theta same thing or very similar okay so the most important example is the spring force and if you remember the way this works the way springs work is if the spring is here um, at a relaxed position the compression of the spring is zero i'm going to then push this way um, Let's say I'm going to push all the way up until here with an applied force Fa causing a compression of X or a deformation of X. The spring will push back with the same force F of spring. And if you remember the relationship here is that the force of the spring is the negative of my force. And it's also the negative of Kx where K is the spring coefficient and X is the displacement or the deformation is the proper term here okay now the thing to realize is that as I push farther into the spring I get more deformation and the spring pushes against me with a stronger force which means I have to push with a stronger force to keep going into the spring more and more and let's say I push until this much of a deformation here so what I want to do is show you what the force um, or the magnitude of the force of the spring, which is the same as the force that I apply, just in opposite directions, what the magnitude of that force would look like. Um, I'm going to graph this uh, against the deformation of the spring. Okay. So if the deformation is zero, it's because I'm not pushing at all. So I have zero comma zero. And if as I push more, I guess I get more of a force. So as my X grows, as my deformation grows, the force that I have to push with and the force the spring pushes back against me with, they both grow together and then you get something like this. Okay. And then I stopped here. So this is my maximum deformation. Let's make up some numbers here real quick. Um, let's say that my maximum deformation is two meters. And that requires a force of a thousand meters. So the idea is that what I can do is, or what I have to do is I have to get the average of this force. Okay. And the average between zero and 1000 is 500. I'm sorry, this is Newton's. It's a force. It's Newton's. So this would be 500 Newton's, which by the way, would give me a compression of one meter. It's half the maximum uh, force, so it's half the maximum compression. This is my force max. This is my force minimum, which is zero. And this is my force average, which is just between the two numbers. Okay, So I can say that the force that I'm dealing with here, which is the force of the spring, is Kx. Okay, That's the F here that I'm dealing with, is Kx. But in this case, the average force is going to be the average between the minimum and the maximum. So it's min plus max divided by 2. The minimum force is 0. The maximum force is Kx divided by 2. So the average force is Kx over 2. So the work done by a force that is variable is that force, the average of that force, x cosine of theta. Well, the average of that force is right here, kx over 2. Um, this is a d right here, right? A distance or a delta x. Let's just say delta x. 
If I push and I compress the spring by one meter, that's the compression of the spring, that's the deformation of the spring, but it's also how much I pushed. So in this case, the delta x here on the work equation is the same thing as the deformation of the spring. So it's kx over 2 times x cosine of theta. Theta is going to be 0 because I push this way, fa, and the spring compresses this way, delta x. So this is going to be 0. And the cosine of 0, remember, is 1. So I get that the work done by my pushing force in is going to be half kx squared. Okay? So let me rewrite this real quick. The work done by the applied force, the force that's compressing the spring or deforming the spring, is half kx squared, which, by the way, look here, that's the elastic potential energy, which is the same thing as the elastic potential energy. So u elastic, and I'll talk more about this um, shortly, okay? And that should make sense. A spring that's not compressed has no potential energy. When I compress it, if I spend 100 joules of energy, if I put 100 joules of work into this uh, spring, it now has a potential energy of 100. My work went into elastic potential energy. So this makes sense. However, as I push into the spring with an FA, and the spring moves this way, delta X, the force of the spring is back. So the spring is doing negative work against my motion. It's moving that way, I'm pushing that way, but the spring is pushing this way. So the angle between the angle between the displacement and the force of the spring is 180 degrees. And remember the cosine of 180 is negative 1. So I can say that the work done by the spring force, you get the same exact thing here, except you get a negative 1 right there. So it's going to be negative half kx squared or negative the potential energy because the spring is basically fighting back against you okay so that's how that works i'll talk about that a little bit more and i'll give you a more generic expression here but that's just to show you how we get the average of a force um, which is what you should be using right here the average of the force okay which is the same equation that i just showed you guys here um, and in this case, it's minimum, maximum divided by 2, just a, a basic math average. Um, and that's how that would work. And for the specific case of a spring, it ends up giving you these two here. Okay. The last thing I want to talk about before we go here to this uh, other side is that graphically, uh, in other words, in terms of a, a chart like this, the work done by any force, any, any variable force, um, any variable or, uh, I should write here, variable or constant force, therefore any, right, is the area under the FX graph. So when I say FX here, I mean the, the graph showing force over displacement or, or, or compression, right, in the case of a spring. So for example, if I wanted to find the work done by this, uh, by me in compressing this, I could just find the area here, okay? And in this case, this is a triangle, right? And I want to remind you that the area of a triangle is half base times height, right? It's a right triangle like that. Now, another thing I could have done um, instead is, remember, the idea here is that you get the average force and you calculate this with the average force. So the average force is 500 right here. So I could also have found the area under the average force like this. And that's a little bit easier because now it's a rectangle. And effectively, it's the same thing that we're doing when we um, simplify this equation to say it's the, the work done by the average force. In fact, this area here is exactly the same area. That area that I just erased is the same area as this, right? So the area under a curve. Let's talk about one more thing here, then we're going to do some examples. Um, what happens if you are 
a spring is already compressed here and I take it to here. So this is the initial compression of the spring and I want to move it to another compression, compression fine over here. Well, the amount of force needed to bring it to here is this much, right? You need this kind of, this uh, much force. Let's draw this a little bit uh, less steep. So I need this much force here. Um, this is the amount F initial that I need to hold it at that point. And then if I want to compress it even more, I have to keep squeezing the spring until this point right here. And it requires a force final. Okay, so the amount of work that it takes to go um, from here to here is the potential energy. So the amount of work that it takes to go from here to here is, I'm going to call that potential energy, 1. And the amount of work that it takes to go from here to here, I'm going to call that the work needed to get to that second point is the same as, remember, remember it's the same as the potential energy, it's potential energy 2, okay? So let's say it takes 100 work to go from here to here, but it takes 300 work to go from here to here, to the third point, okay? So the work to go from one to the other, from initial to final here, would be just the difference between these two. So the work to go between one and two is u2 minus u1. Okay? And the conclusion here is that the work um, to go between those two points is the change in potential energy. So these two equations here, when I said that the work done by a force that's pushing is the potential energy, and the work done by the spring is the negative of the potential energy, this was kind of incomplete. This only works if you start from zero. But the more general one is that the work needed to compress is the change in potential energy, elastic potential energy, and the work done by the spring in this situation is the negative of the change in potential energy. Okay? Now, one thing that might help you remember this is that the work done by mg, which you might remember, the work done by gravity, is the negative of the change in gravitational potential energy. As I lift something, gravity is pulling it down. So it goes against motion, so therefore the negative. As I compress a spring, the spring is also going against me, therefore the negative. And when as I lift, I give something potential energy, but the spring goes against me. And when I compress, I give something elastic potential energy, but the spring goes against me. Gravity goes against me, spring goes against me. Um, therefore, in both cases, you see that the work done by those forces is the negative of the potential energy that you gain um, by making that kind of motion. Okay? So, very, very similar. Um, the idea here is very similar. And if you remember, the work done to lift was the positive of the potential energy. Here, the work done to compress is the positive of the potential energy. Because in lifting and in compressing, you are adding potential energy to the system. Okay? So these are sort of the more general um, cases, uh, equations. Um, that's what you should remember. Not so much these here. Okay? So let's do uh, two examples real quick.